Hey, welcome back. This is a, a fun, fun history talk today. Today, we're going to talk about these guys, these Jim Beam decanters. About once a week, I get an email. Hey, Fred, is my Jim Beam decanter worth anything? Hey, is this one worth anything? What about this one? Oh, you know what? My my grandpa was a big Blue Jay fan, and he collected a whole bunch of these things. Is it worth any money? Everybody wants to know if their Jim Beam decanters are worth any money. Before I answer that to you, first let me tell you about the history of them. These things are steeped in bourbon history. They're so, so important. They actually led the charge of a movement in the 1950s through the 1970s about decanters. Distillers would uh, create like special decanters for a cause or something that was near and dear to their heart. Old Crow came out with these cool chess pieces. Uh, the Van Winkles had a, a fun little Rip Van Winkle guy fishing. Uh, Old Crow also had like a like a penguin crow looking thing. It was a crow, but I always think it looks like a penguin. I think it's because they try to dress it like a penguin. But there's all all these brands did something that was near and dear to their heart. Michter's is another one. They had the cool pyramids. So all these brands in the 1950s through 1970s, even the early 1980s, they had decanters. Jim Beam, however, was by far and away the leader. They start their kind of their their special packaging movement in the ni early 1950s. By 1955, they partnered with Regal China, and they started creating cars, and they created all these different types of, uh, uh, they created canteens, uh, Ducks Unlimited, PGA Golf. They did Republican and Democrat ones. They did all of these decanters that meant something to people that would help them tap into new audiences. So, And what happened was, Collector clubs were created around the world. And in 1966, there was actually a club created that was organized and they met. It was the National Association of Jim Beam Bottle and Specialty Clubs. Now, these people would collect and spend money all around the world. And newspapers like this one in uh, San Antonio would write about these guys in depth, and they would spend, at the time, upwards of $2,000 for getting something like the uh, Corvette or some kind of collectible that was unique to them. Now, the whiskey inside was always eight years old. I've seen, uh, or it was in that eight years old range. It was always 86 proof. I've never seen one that was above 86 proof, but I am always amazed. I always thought they were eight years old, but then I picked up one that was 10 years old once, and there are a lot of books out there that are that are specifically dedicated to uh, the decanters, but they don't really talk about the whiskey. They only talk about what the what was what was how it was made. And you've got one like this uh, this Bell Scotch, 1970. This Bell was made by Regal China to contain the Bell Scotch now distributed in Beam in this country. Earlier Bells were made by Royal Dalton of England. And also wait for Arthur Bell and Sons of Perth, Scotland. Now, if you are someone who collected bells, like this guy right here, you might find yourself going out of your way to, to get this special bell scotch. So I actually have a few of these. Uh, I picked this up at a garage sale. So when anybody contacts me about uh, a beam decanter, I go through this old book that was, uh, you know, it's falling apart. Funny story, though, it was, uh, it was made at, you know, the guy who had it. Uh, smoked and these things still smell like uh, a smoker's basement but you can see on the back there they have all the pricing and everything for the time let's take a look a night the original 1953 cocktail shaker was selling for four bucks back in the day so i have a feeling that that one would still be a value now the question that i get a lot is the whiskey still any good well listen i don't believe in decanters of course the irony of that, the greatest whiskey I have ever tasted came from a decanter, and that was the Old Crow chess piece. But that Old Crow chess piece had special whiskey going into it. These Jim Beam decanters, there was really nothing special about the whiskey, or at least nothing that I've been able to find to determine that the whiskey was unique, other than being typical Jim Beam going into the bottle. Now, granted, it would be eight years old. Again, I found a bottle of 10 years old once. Uh, but there was nothing really special about them. And I had tasted multiple of these that were not open, cracked them open, and tasted them. None of them have ever been complex. Nothing's been special about them. I have never found a Jim Beam decanter with whiskey that blew my mind. 
Now, with that said, there are some who swear by them. Uh, for example, my good friend Jason Bronner at Bourbon's Bistro. He is a big fan, big fan of the Jim Beam decanter, so if you have one, you may consider calling him. He may actually want to take a look at it. Now, is the whiskey any good? Now, for me, it's not, as I mentioned. There's also a concern as to whether or not there is lead that leaches off in here. Now, the ceramics of the time were made with lead paint. This was, not, this was something that everybody did. This was nothing unique to the, uh, to the whiskey world, but the china of that time was used, you know, was basically glazed or painted with like a lead paint. So this right here could potentially have lead leaching off into it. Now, does that, should that stop you from drinking it? Well, you know what? I think if you drink the whole bottle, you know, you might get lead poisoning, but you shouldn't drink a whole bottle of whiskey. And at the end of the day, they have little lead strips that you can go test with. You can te you can buy them at Lowe's or on Amazon. You can test the whiskey before you taste it. But I personally do not think there is any value in these other than the what they offer from a collectible standpoint. Also, you cannot tell unless you weigh a full one and then weigh an empty one how much whiskey is in there. And you, you can try to do the shake thing, but you could actually damage the cork that's or the, the fastener that's holding it together. So if you're going to buy something that has the seal that's on there and it hasn't been hasn't been tampered with, you're always risking, um, you're always taking a risk. We've also got stories from people like Shane at Wilderness Trail who said that he drank all his family's uh, whiskey that was in these special decanters and he refilled them with, iced tea so you never can really trust what's inside these bottles so with that said i don't think there's any value in them i wouldn't buy them i don't think they're a good investment but hey if you're a fun collector and you like to keep around fun stuff like uh this old bird here or this um this yeah, i don't even know what the pony express you know why not take a take a gander with it and this one here says it's 100 months old. 100 months old, take out the calculator, and that's how many years it is. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many years is 100 months? I can't think right off the top of my head. That would be eight. So 100 months divided by 12 is eight. I was not a math major. Hey, if you'd like to learn more about whiskey and the history and what I like to taste, go ahead and click the old subscribe button. And tune in for more history lessons as well as tastings. Until next time, see you later.